Hi everyone, welcome to another session of Training Tips with Ward. In the video clips that follow, I'm going to be dealing with the American Kennel Club Directed Retrieve Exercise. But first, what I'd like to do is briefly describe the exercise for my Canadian friends as we don't have this exercise in Canada. The handler and the dog at his left side take up a position that is midway between the two jumps in the utility setup. While the handler is standing between the two jumps with his dog, the judge faces the handler directly in front of him. As this occurs, the steward takes three white gloves, or mostly white gloves, and places them about three feet in from the wall and about three feet in from the corner. So there's a glove here, there's a glove here in the center, and there's a glove here in this corner. The gloves are numbered in terms of which glove they are as one, two, three. As the judge is standing in a position in front of the handler, and the handler is here with his dog, the judge will ask the handler, are you ready? And the handler responds when ready, yes or ready. When that occurs, the judge will then say to the handler, only the number of the glove that he wishes the dog to turn to and the dog to go to and retrieve. So in this case, if the judge were to say, number one, the handler with his dog beside him would turn to face number one glove, like so. And then give the dog a mark with his left hand beside the right side of the muzzle of the dog and following that the handler would give the command to take it. Now assuming that the dog goes out to the correct glove, the dog would pick it up and come directly back. So some considerations are the turn, the position of the dog, the dog going straight out and straight back and coming the, and bringing it back to the handler. There are four critical elements to this exercise. The first is the pivot by the handler on the spot to face the particular glove, either one or two or three. How the handler does that is extremely important. The second is the position of the dog as the handler makes that pivot. The dog must maintain attention, must look at the handler, and not peek at the glove. The third critical element is the position of the handler's hand and arm as he gives the dog the signal. Or critical element is that the dog must go out directly to the glove, take the glove cleanly, and come back directly to the handler. So let's take a look at these critical elements one at a time. The first is the pivot, and the handler must stay on the spot or turn on the spot and must also control his feet so that they're not pushing out and pushing against the dog or making the dog move away. So first and foremost, footwork of the handler. There are different ways to do this. The way that I prefer is one that is illustrated by Betsy Scapiccio in one of her YouTube videos, and the one that I use is very similar to that, perhaps slightly different, but it goes like this. The handler takes up a position with his feet slightly apart. 
If it's the number one glove, the handler in moving is going to point the left foot to the toe of the right foot, like that. The next move is to turn the right foot so that it is pointing at the glove, but it goes heel to heel. And the third movement is with the left leg going, pulling in and close. So just to demonstrate that again, it looks like this. Left foot moves, heel to heel, and close, pointing directly at the number one glove. If it's the number two glove, it's simply a T movement, in which case it would look like this. Left foot T, right foot T, and close. And finally, if it's a back turn that the handler is using, uh, a left turn on the handler's part would look like this. Right foot over to the toe or just past the toe. Left foot turns to the heel and points at the corner. So we're pointing directly at the glove. The second critical element is the position of the dog and the attention of the dog on the turns. It is absolutely mandatory that the dog look at the handler in the heel position and follow him around on the turns. To do otherwise means that the dog's head drops and when the dog's head drops, the dog has a tendency to see the gloves in front of him and pick the one that he thinks is the correct one. Frequently, when this occurs, it's the wrong glove. Now, in accomplishing this, one of the things that I do is I use a different focal point for the turn as I'm going in either direction. The focal point is my wristwatch or my wrist. It hangs by my side so that as I turn, the dog will maintain his position by watching that focal point. Is the way that the handler signals the dog or points to the glove and uh, then follows with a command. Now, in doing this, it's necessary that the handler develop consistency. Very often we see handlers that go out and their dog may not have turned quite right, so they end up taking and pushing the hand too into the side of the face or pulling it over here to try to get the dog to adjust where he's going to go. The way I do it is by taking my two hands, if I'm standing like this, at the time that I've made my turn, I then take my two hands and move them down my thighs using this hand, the right hand, as support and continuing along and I touch at the beginning of training, I touch my elbow to my thigh. So the way that looks is like this. So trying that again. Now, as I do that with my dog, when my elbow touches my left thigh, I say to my dog, wait. So it looks like this. Wait. As I said, this occurs in training. And the reason that is, is because when I'm going down and giving my dog the mark, I do not want him to leave uh, before he gets the verbal command to go and retrieve. So again, it looks like 
wait, take it. So I deliberately pause in training when I'm marking the glove with the signal because I want my dog to learn to wait for that command. The dog therefore learns through association that when my hand and arm go out to point at the glove I want him to take, he learns he has to wait until I give him the verbal command. If your dog leaves before getting the verbal command, it is a disqualification. And that verbal command has to be given either during the movement of the left arm going out and pointing to the glove or immediately after. Some of you may find that going down like this and touching your elbow is a little bit awkward. In that case, I would simply go down, brace myself with my right hand, and not touch the elbow, but use my hand movement as a guide for position. In that manner, I consistently get the same arm movement each time I'm sending my dog to the glove. Finally, the last critical element of the exercise is that the dog must go directly to the glove, take it and pick it up and come directly back. To arc, either way is going to be a penalty. Having said that, one must also remember that penalties will be assessed or points deducted uh, for all of the regular things that, that we encounter in the retrieve, uh, the retrieve of the dumbbell and so on. In other words, uh, the dog must front properly, uh, nice and straight, the finish must be straight. These are all possible point deductions. But the four critical ones, I think, when one is learning this exercise, are particularly important. To demonstrate how I would teach this initially, I simply put a glove out and I take my dog and I hold onto his collar with my right hand. I point to the glove. Look, look. Take it. Yeah. Hold. Uh uh. Hold. Now, often, when the dogs go to pick up the cloth glove, it's a little different feeling and they may try to mouth it a bit, in which case I simply say hold, put my hand under his chin, and he's holding it. Now, I want him to keep holding that as I move my hands underneath his jaw or below his jaw. Good hold. Give. And then I want him to spit it out. Once my dog is comfortable and is marking, when I give him the mark, the hand beside his face, I want him to make sure that he locks onto the glove and is looking directly at it. I don't want him looking around. So I, in this case, have put out four gloves around me. I've gone to the center and I'm going to work around as though I'm working a clock face. Now you can put out more than four. I don't usually put out any more than four, but you can put out six and space them equally and do whatever you want. To demonstrate how I would do it now, using my legs as a guide. Wait, take it. On the return, Ha <laughs> little crooked, that's better. Give. Yeah. Stay. And from the side, I would then pivot and go to the side. Here. Yeah. Sit. No, wait. Take it.
Good hold. Good boy. Lower my hands under the glove. Give. Like that. Now, in terms of the last item, the last critical item, which is making sure the dog goes directly out and comes directly back, that's when I start using a flexi again, one of my favorite training tools. So I will show it to you here. He's already picked out the glove. I want to make sure he doesn't burst on me, uh, try, to get out, try to get out to the glove before I want him to leave. So here we go. Ah, ah. Take it. And a little pop for the return. Hold. So in this example, I'm not going to go down so far so my, to, to allow my elbow to touch my thigh. I'm simply going to run my left hand partway down and give him his mark from there. Take it. Hold, give. Take it. Good hold. Good hold. Good hold. Hands underneath. Give. Excellent. All right. One thing to remember is that when the dog goes out, makes the pickup, and comes back on the retrieve, the handler should be in a position with his hands naturally hanging at his side and in an upright position. It's very important that on the turn, the dog maintain his position watching the handler. In other words, paying attention. And he can't be looking at the gloves until he gets his mark. So to demonstrate that, he watch. Take it. Give. Okay, good boy. I'm going to, in this case, do a turn for the number two glove. This means that the dog must maintain attention because I don't want him looking at the number one glove and picking that one as the one he wants to go to. So I'm expecting him to pay attention all the way around and then I'll give him his mark and his command. Hey, watch. Take it. Give. Now, this time, I'm going to be sending him to the number three glove. But hear my command. When I was turning right, it was, he watch. And when I turn left, it's going to be, like, watch. Now, the reason is because I want the last word that I say to him on that turn to be watch. And I've simply taken and put a B in front of watch and an H in front of uh, watch going to my right. And the reason for that is because I would, in early training, say to the dog, heel and start my turn, watch. So it would be heel, watch. But of course you can't give a double command, but there is nothing wrong with taking and breaking that down or shortening what you're saying into he watch or the watch so it becomes one word. In this case, I'm going to be saying the watch. Ready? <clears throat> Back watch.
take it. Give. So in training this in the early stages, I'm going to use two words in making the turn. And because when I turn to the right, it's a movement away, and I want him to stay in heel position, I'm going to say heel, and then I'm going to say watch in, and make that turn, like so. Heel, watch. Good watch. Good boy. Now, if I were to do it the other way, I would be simply going back, watch. Back, watch. Take it. Hold. Good hold. Give. So in training the command and the, uh, the movement command on the uh, turns, if you're feeling uncomfortable at all and think, oh, well, if I do that, the judge might think there's uh, two commands being given, and I would say, whatever you do, make sure that you sandwich the words very quickly, like, he watch, back watch. Or, by the stage you're ready to compete, all you will have to do is simply give your command for the uh, watch and start moving, moving your body and your dog will follow you. For example, watch. And to the left then, come on up. And to the left, it would be like this, watch. And in terms of proofing and getting rid of the flexi, I'm going to do a few, uh, rec a few uh, retrieves without using the flexi. And I'm also going to cover gloves with these black rubber mats. Now this becomes a game for Dash. He thinks this is great fun. If you're training it and you want to proof by covering up the glove, the first time you use it, put a little bit, allow a little bit of the glove to be showing out from underneath the mat so the dog gets the idea. Now the reason that we proof like this is because quite often it's a very confusing thing for the dog when, for example, he sees baby gates with crisscross shadows on the ground around the gloves and it confuses the dog, or if there's sh other shadows on it, or if it happens to be in grass that is a bit long uh, and the dog can't see it, and you give him the mark for that corner or directly back, the dog may go, hey, look, I can't see that, so I'm not going to go, or I'm going to start looking for the other one, and if that's the case, he'll head for the one that is most apparent to him. So you must train your dog so that he will go the direction that you're pointing regardless of whether or not he sees it. And the way I do it is as follows. So I'm going to work the number one glove here, but the dog will be able to see the number two glove. So it's very tempting for him to head for the number two glove. So I'll make my turn and we'll see how it goes. If it goes as planned, he should go out and play the game. And that is pull the rubber matting off the top of the glove, get the glove and bring it back. Watch. Yeah. Take it. Give. Good guy. Stay. 
This time, I'm going to go for the center glove, which is visible, and then following that, I'll go for the, have, send them to the number three glove. Watch. Take it. Give. This time I have the number one, the number two glove uncovered, and I'm going to send him to the corner glove, the number three glove. Good watch. Back. Take it. Give. This time I've got all three gloves covered with black rubber. So even if the dog can't see the glove, he has to learn that he goes in the direction that you've pointed him and then he'll get close enough to see the glove in a regular competition. In this case, however, he has to go out and pull the rubber matting off of the glove and bring it back to me. So that's our game. Hey, watch. Take it. Give. Good boy. Good guy. This time, it's going to be the number three glove that I'm sending him to. Back. Take it. Give. I'm now going to send him to the number two glove and a couple of things I want to mention uh, in particular is focal points on these turns. I normally train using, on turns like this, the wristwatch. My wristwatch as the focal point. Some people train with the number up here, uh, their, their armband, but I feel that that's, there's a long, fairly long distance between the armband and the dog's positioning spot. So I like to use this. You could use your wrist simply or whatever. And normally before I make the turn, before the judge has asked me if I'm ready, I will be going like this to point him, remind him that's your focal point. Watch. Good watch. So, the number two glove. Here. Take it. Give. Close. So that's a very quick run through on the AKC directed retrieve exercise. Remember the important points, the critical areas. One is the footwork on the turn. Number two, positioning and, att and attention by the dog on the turn. Number three, the movement of the arm beside the dog's muzzle, which must be consistent. And finally, getting the dog out and back directly on a straight line. And of course, as I've demonstrated, I've used the flexi for the latter. Work the individual critical areas separately and then put them all together. Perfection in these areas will mean that you and your dog will be very, very successful. Thank you for watching. I hope this helps. 
And remember, have fun training your dog. Thank you.